can see that this x-ray picture is taken of both knees front to back. Uh, the knees are, the patient is bow legged. You can see uh, the, the tibia is bowed down. And if you look at the joint, and I focus in on the right knee, you can see that the gap between the femur and the tibia is totally gone. Basically, it's bone rubbing against bone. Whereas on the outer side, you can still see there's a gap between the two bones. So this is what happens in an older patient because of the generative uh, wear and tear of the cartilage. By and by, the cartilage wears off and they're walking bone on bone. And this explains why they have uh, severe pain when they walk. And it also explains the bow-legged deformity that they have. So this is exactly what we do. You can see that this is a model of the knee and compared to the x-ray, essentially what we've done is we put a metal cap over the upper end of the knee and we put a plastic sitting on a metal, metal tray below. And this is a front view, this is a side view and you can see that with this implant, the patient can bend and move very naturally and they no longer have the pain from the wear and tear of the bone rubbing against the bone. It is important that patients attend a pre-operative education session before her scheduled surgery. Pre-operative education will help in alleviating patients' fear and stress that are commonly associated with surgical procedures. During the class, a nurse clinician will explain and educate patients on several issues. Patients will learn about pain management, deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis, fall prevention, skin preparation, weight bearing status, wound management, activities of daily living, and ensuring a safe home environment. A physiotherapist will perform a knee assessment and educate on basic exercises that will be taught during therapy session, post-operation, and practice at home after surgery. On the day of surgery, patient will report to same-day admission room before proceeding to operating theatre. Post-operative vital signs such as blood pressure, heart rate, respiration rate, temperature and pain will be monitored by the nurses. To ensure patient does not develop deep vein thrombosis, DVT prophylaxis will be given. Anti-embolic stocking and pneumatic pump will be applied to the operated limb. This is to reduce blood stasis and improve blood circulation. Patient is also encouraged to perform exercises such as ankle pumps while in bed. A cryo cuff device which is used to reduce post-operative knee swelling will be applied onto patient's operated knee. On day 1 after surgery, patient will be able to sit out of bed and start physiotherapy. A continuous passive motion, also known as the CPM machine, will also be applied on her operated leg. This machine helps in improving patient's knee range of motion and is applied daily until the patient is able to achieve at least 90 degrees of knee flexion. Some of the exercises taught by the physiotherapists are range of motion exercises, static quads exercises, inner range quads exercises, and straight leg raises. Subsequently, all medical devices and attachments will be removed from patient. Patient will continue her physiotherapy session at the gym. Ok, 
Okay. This x-ray represents the end result after a successful surgery. As you can see, the patient is no longer bow-legged. The knee is nice and straight. This x-ray shows the entire leg all the way from the hip joint to the knee joint to the ankle joint. And the patient stands very nicely balanced uh, and straight. On day 4, patient is seen walking independently with a quad stick. She is able to perform her daily activities on her own. Her pain level has reduced tremendously. Patient is ready for home.